Congratulations! You're about to install G-Floor, a revolutionary floor covering from Better Life Technology. The customer you're about to provide service to has made a substantial investment in this flooring system, and while it will take only a matter of hours to install this flooring, proper installation will assure many years of satisfied use and perhaps a repeat customer for future products introduced by Better Life Technology. Better Life Technology wants to assure that the highest quality of workmanship that went into the design and manufacturing of this flooring is maintained through this final phase of installation. This video will provide a roadmap to assure a successful installation and a satisfied customer. We'll be following along step by step with information on this company brochure that has been provided. Take this with you during the installation and refer to it if necessary. Now, during your pre-installation trip, you measured the floor and ordered the proper amount of flooring. Before traveling to install G-Floor, call to confirm the order with the customer, making sure you have the correct color and pattern the customer ordered. The BLT installation kit assures you have all the proper tools you'll need to complete the installation. Once at the installation site, Remember, you and your crew are guests. It's important to always be aware of proper conduct, language, and overall courtesy to the customer. If entering the home or office, for example, removing your shoes shows respect for property. A small gesture like this speaks volumes about your professionalism to the customer. If you bring a radio to the site, ask the customer permission to use it and be aware of the volume level. These items may seem unimportant to a successful installation, but a satisfied customer will not forget attention to these small details, especially if minor problems arise later. Any successful installation must be a safe one. Be aware of possible safety hazards on site. A quick survey of the surroundings with safety in mind can eliminate injuries later. Look for items hanging on a wall, for example, or on a shelf that could cause an injury if they fell on someone. You're now ready to begin the installation of G-Floor. Step 1. Clean the floor. Sweep the entire floor, making sure it's clean, dry, and free of any debris. A small object, while not likely to damage G-Floor, can leave an unsightly blemish. Examine the floor for large, uneven cracks or defects. Hairline cracks are not going to be a problem. Fill any holes or cracks as needed. If you're installing over an older floor, there may be oil or grease from a vehicle. Clean oil, grease, or chemicals up properly before installing G-Floor. G-Floor is made of 100% vinyl. There's no lead, no asbestos, or paper filler products in the manufacturing of G-Floor. Step 2. Unroll G-Floor. As you unroll G-Floor, Start at the garage door and unroll toward the back of the garage. As the roll gets smaller, the curling effect, if there is any, will end up along the back wall and not at the front opening area. If any cutting is to be done, it's better to cut the small end of the roll. Use a broom to push out any air bubbles from underneath the flooring. G-Floor's flexibility might be affected by the air temperature. Allow G-Floor to relax and fall into place before trimming or cutting. Now, here are two important points regarding cutting G-Floor, regardless of which installation procedure is followed. First, always cut along a sidewall so any imperfections in the cutting process are less noticeable. This leaves the precision cut edges from the factory at the center of the garage for a clean, professional look. Second. When cutting the coin pattern or the diamond pattern, the design can actually be a guide. If you cut across the top of the coin or the top of the diamond, that pattern repeats itself every two inches and provides a built-in guide. Here's another very important point. Don't assume the garage or the room you're working on is perfectly square. Be sure you measure at several points along any wall before cutting. Widths can vary by an inch or more front to back. Don't find that out after you've made a long cut. Which leads us to step three, joints and cuts. The manufacturer recommends that as you begin, 
you find the center of the garage or the room you're working on and place one seam along that center line. This usually assures that a vehicle tire will not end up on the seam. This is also a good time to locate a support pole or a floor drain. These could determine your final layout and where seams are located. One place you don't want a seam is that area in front of the door that leads into the home or the office. You'll want to be sure you have a clean run of G-Floor in this area. If the customer has ordered a drop installation, there are no seams. You simply unroll a single roll of G-Floor where the vehicle is to be parked and that's it. There are two other basic installation procedures recommended by the manufacturer of G-Floor. Each has to do with how the seams are treated. Customer preference will determine which procedure you'll follow and this should already have been decided at the time of the order. Still, it's a good idea to confirm with the customer what they desire. No matter what procedure is selected, always remember that any cutting should be done along a wall, keeping the precision cut seams from the factory together for a total professional look. The first method is the most common and is called the overlap method. As the name suggests, when multiple rolls are installed, one piece of floor simply overlaps the other. Now, the overlap can be anywhere from one and a half to six inches. This allows the customer to pull up a section and replace it easily. For a more installed look, the customer may wish to select the butt joint method where the rolls come together and do not overlap. When this method is selected, place two edges together that were precision cut from the factory. This will assure a perfect match along that seam. Be sure that the pattern also matches and is aligned along the seam. Any trimming should be done along a side or a back wall. Once the floor is in place, fold back the edge of each of the rolls and wipe them with a clean cloth. Attach tape along the edge of one of the rolls, leaving about two inches of tape exposed. Allow that roll to fall back into position. Next, allow the second roll to fall back into place, making sure the seam and the pattern on the rolls are aligned. Now be careful not to stretch or pull on G-Floor at this point, allowing it to relax into place. Do not tape G-Floor next to a wall, allowing it to float and expand or contract with the temperature. Step 4. Trimming. Trim G-Floor around poles, corners, or steps using the utility knife provided. Now it's recommended that you leave about a quarter inch gap when trimming along a wall to allow for expansion or contraction. Always be sure G-Floor is relaxed and in place before doing any cutting or trimming. No matter what installation procedure is selected by the customer, always secure the threshold at the opening of the garage using two-sided tape or spray adhesive. This completes the installation. Offer to leave any larger remnants of G-Floor with the customer. The customer may have a few questions regarding care for their new G-Floor. Take whatever time necessary to answer all their questions. Be sure to point out that most spills will not harm G-Floor, especially if cleaned up immediately. The manufacturer recommends products the customer can use to clean and shine G-Floor. Be sure the customer has that information or knows how to obtain it. A good place to start is the company website, vltllc.com.